An old region rotates back into Earth view after surviving its backside passage, and it's the brightest thing on the sun. How will it affect you? That story and more in the news this week. Space weather this week continues to be a bit unsettled. As we switch to our front side sun, you can see a coronal hole that rotated through the Earth's strike zone. It had bumped us up to active conditions a few times this week and even brought us some aurora at high latitudes. But that's not the big story. The big story is the bright region 2738 that is rotating into Earth view. This is a returning sunspot and it is massive. As we switch to our stereo view, which is looking at the sun pretty much from the side, you can see that huge sunspot there. It's the only thing that draws your eye. And believe it or not, it is still firing low C-class flares and a few solar storms. It even fired one near Mars the other day. So this region is still an, a very active region, and we are watching it as it continues to boost the solar flux up for emergency responders. We're back into marginal radio propagation on Earth's day side, and it looks like these conditions are going to continue easily over the next week. Switching to our moon, this week we are passing through the first quarter phase, and by the 13th the moon will be a little bit over half illuminated. So you night sky watchers, if you want to search for dim objects, you're going to need to check your moon rise and set times. And now for your Leo Mio Geo orbit outlook. Even though we haven't had any intense solar storming over the past week, we've managed to bump up to active conditions several times over a longer duration, and this has a tendency to really wreak havoc with our near-Earth space environment. As we switch to our low-energy particles, these are the ones that cause surface charging on the outside of spacecraft, including the solar arrays that then can cause electrical discharges and sh short circuits. You can see that flux ring begin to build up around the 7th and the 8th, and it begins to get really thick and very intense around geo and meo orbits so you satellite operators i guarantee you've been probably fighting some issues here over the past few days luckily we would get all of this flux dumped right around midday on the 8th and that is giving us a little bit of a reprieve until things begin to build back up again switching to our higher energy environment these are particles that penetrate much more deeply and can cause internal charging issues for sensitive electronics in the spacecraft you can see a similar story Right around the 8th, we started really building up a ring of intense fluxes around MEO orbit. So you satellite operators, you might be dealing with some internal charging, but luckily those, those particles got flushed again around midday on the 8th, and we are slowly building those particles back up again. So you're going to get a reprieve, but expect over the next couple days that you could also have an issue with internal charging. And did you happen to capture the strange lights in the sky back on the 5th when there was some aurora? Well, don't worry, it's not aliens. These lights are part of a NASA rocket mission called Azure, in which scientists are studying the neutral and charged atmosphere by throwing out dust clouds that kind of act like fireworks and light up the sky a little bit. They want to be able to see how the winds move during aurora. And it gave us such an amazing show, and I want to thank Miguel Larson, Colby Lemon, and Jim Hecht, among others, for giving us such an incredibly dazzling display, and I I hope the results that you guys get are worth every moment. Switching to your solar storm conditions and aurora possibilities over the coming week, we've been dealing with pretty much unsettled conditions and things will continue to stay that way. We do have a chance for a small pocket of fast solar wind to hit us right around the 12th and the 13th, but don't expect all that much from it. At high latitudes, NOAA is expecting unsettled conditions to active conditions with up to about a 30% chance of a minor storm and even a skosh of a major storm around the 12th. But at mid-latitudes, we're expecting unsettled conditions and maybe up to about a 25% chance of active conditions. But again, aurora photographers don't expect there to be much here. It's not going to be a very large storm. And then things will continue to settle down as we move through the weekend. Switching to your solar flare and particle radiation storm outlook over the coming week, Old Region 2736 has survived its backside passage and now is back in Earth view, and it is still active. It's been firing solar flares on the backside as well as the front side, even a solar storm here or two, but a not very large ones. So everything is in the green when it comes to big solar flares. We don't have any risk for radio blackouts, so you GPS operators should be very happy. But this is a huge region on the Earth-facing disk right now, and it 
it has boosted that solar flux. We're back up into the high 70s for uh, solar flux, which means marginal radio propagation again on Earth's day side. This is good news for you amateur shortwave and emergency responders. You guys should be loving life easily over the next few days, probably even over the next week or more before this region begins to kind of die down and rotate back around the backside and solar flux begins to tank once again. Now, also because we are near solar minimum, we do have a higher cosmic ray impingement than we normally would have. So all of you frequent flyers, and this does include you air crew who fly over 800 hours annually and fly at high latitudes and high altitudes, you are in the marginal range for radiation dose. And this does include prenatal passengers. So please take this into consideration in your flight plans. So the space weather this week remains a bit unsettled. We do have a chance for a small pocket of fast wind to hit us around the 12th and 13th, and this could boost the aurora chances at high latitudes for a very short while, but most likely things will remain pretty much unsettled for this week. Now, the good news is we have old region 2736 that's been renumbered 2738 that is rotated back into Earth view, and it has boosted the solar flux back up in to the balmy high 70s. So amateur radio and shortwave radio, as well as emergency responders, enjoy some decent radio propagation on Earth's day side easily over the next week or so, possibly a little bit longer before this region rotate back to the sun's backside. Now, also you GPS users, well, you know, GPS reception should be looking pretty good. We don't have any, any really big solar flares to worry about, so no radio blackouts. And we also don't have any big solar storms so not that much aurora either. So your reception all over the globe should look pretty nice. I'm Tamitha Scove. Thank you for watching.